Madam Secretary, I read with interest the, the G, G7 statement on Ukraine from your meeting in Hiroshima uh, last month, which reiterated a commitment to stand against Russia's illegal war in Ukraine. G7 leaders called on Russia to pay for the damages and long-term reconstruction costs of Ukraine. And while the U.S. has made major contributions thus far, I agree that ultimately Russia should bear that responsibility. That's why I'm working on a bill called the Ukraine Reconstruction Act, which would ensure that the United States has the authority it needs to take title to Russian sovereign assets and transfer them to an international escrow fund to pay for war damages. This would be fully in line with international norms, conventions, and precedent, and also be done in coordination with our allies in Europe and elsewhere. It's also in line with both the G7 and the United Nations, which call for the establishment of, I quote, an international mechanism for reparation for damage, loss, and injury, close quote, and pointed out Russia's frozen sovereign assets held in central banks around the world. I want to thank the Treasury uh, for their technical assistance and particularly the engagement of your Deputy Secretary. Uh, do you agree that this is the right approach and that legislation of this nature is necessary? Well, let me start by thanking you for your engagement on this important issue. Um, from the outset of Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, we have taken decisive steps of immobilizing Russian central bank reserves and working alongside our allies and partners, we have immobilized jointly about $300 billion worth of reserves. As you noted, um, we are committed um, with the G7 to ensuring that these assets remain immobilized until there's a resolution of the conflict in which Russia pays for the damage it's caused. Um, and we are working with allies and partners uh, also in the G7 and the so-called Repo Task Force on this issue. Now, however, it's the case that most of the assets, Russia's sovereign assets, are not in the United States. Um, and for that reason, it's critical that any next steps we take be done via careful consultation with allies and partners in a coordinated approach. We are engaging in those discussions. We're working first to more accurately map exactly where these assets are, and we're examining a number of options, including some that we may be able to take under existing authorities, but we do look forward to working with you and members of Congress on this important issue. I think that's uh, important. I thank you for that. And I do think you're, you're right in each of the respective legal systems among the G7 nations and allied nations. They need companion type legislation. Thank you for that. Uh, you chair the Financial Stability Oversight Council, the FSOC. And as chair, I assume it's fair to say that any report FSOC puts out, you put eyes on and have taken a look at. Is that true? That's fair. Last October, FSOC released a report called the Digital Asset Financial Stability Risks and Regulation Report, and it says, and I quote, digital asset businesses do not have a consistent or comprehensive regulatory framework and can take advantage of gaps in the regulatory system and engage in regulatory arbitrage. We couldn't agree more, many of us on both sides of the aisle, and I think FTX just showed uh, just as long as these entities are outside the United States and outside some sort of a framework, Americans are continuing to be at risk until we establish a regulatory framework protecting investments and uh, innovators, but also that innovation, Web3 distributed ledger innovation in our, in our, uh, in our country. So FSCOC report recommended that Congress pass legislation to provide regulators authority over spot markets for digital assets, as well as legislation to give regulators more authority to have visibility into or supervise digital asset companies. We're working on that here in Congress. Are those recommendations from last uh, fall or late summer's FSOC report still the recommendations of FSOC? That's still the view of FSOC? Yes, um, that remains the view of FSOC that there are some gaps like spot markets for crypto assets that are not securities. We would like to see a regulatory framework over those markets. And there are gaps in regulations. I would point out specifically stable coins, 
And I do believe that we need a comprehensive federal prudential framework and would be pleased to work with you with Congress to see if we can develop such a framework. Thank you, Madam Secretary.